Welcome to the Safety and Risk Success podcast with me, Christian Harris. I've got a recording of a safety roundtable session to share with you today, and it's all about the question of whether safety is an illusion. What do we mean by that? Well, as we will discuss, we'll look at, on the one hand, the data, the outcomes, some of the challenges that we're facing with safety, and on the other hand, all of the good work that we do that we talk about on this very podcast and on the safety roundtable sessions. How do we square that circle? We'll go through some examples, some other data points, and get some thoughts from uh, audience members on the safety roundtable as well. I found this a really valuable discussion. Um, I think it's always useful to take a step back, reflect, and think about ways we can improve. And hopefully this will prompt you to do just that. Enjoy. Welcome to the Safety and Risk Success Podcast with Christian Harris. We believe that proactive safety and risk management powers business performance. Each week we explore this theme, sharing guests, stories, insights, trends, hints and tips. You can find us on all the major podcasting platforms and video versions are available on YouTube. But for now, let's join the conversation with Christian. So this one is going to be very interactive. Um, it's a topic that I was keen to discuss um, because I think that it's one where we can share some interesting perspectives and uh, get some good conversation going. Um, uh, hopefully you enjoy the um, AI generated image here on the screen as well of uh, the um, magician pulling the yellow wet floor sign out of the uh, out of the hat instead of the rabbit. I thought that was uh, that was quite good when I uh, uh, saw that um, uh, thanks to the beautiful work of um, open AI so I was quite pleased with that one. So um, let's set a bit of context here with some data and um, Vince Butler, who can't be on the call today, but um, has uh, has joined other calls before, um, reminded me about this. So I thought I would share this data with you. And it comes from the Hazards campaign. Um, there's lots more sitting behind this, but um, 6 million life-changing uh, instances of harm every year, 1,500 people killed directly in the line of work so you know at work doing something and killed and 60,000 people killed indirectly a lot of that through um exposure uh to um to harmful uh chemicals and, and breathing uh, challenges and so on and so forth um so that's a bit of sobering data to set on the one side of this and then i suppose on the other side of the coin would be all of the great discussions that we've had on the Safety Roundtable, on the Safety and Risk Success podcast uh, that we see on LinkedIn, that we have at networking events uh, that IOSH uh, and other bodies speak about all the time, which is all the great work that we do on safety to, to be safe, to ensure the safety of our colleagues and our customers and everyone else uh, in the world. And how do we balance the, those two things? And that's what kind of got, gave, gave me the idea of this discussion today. You know, is safety an illusion? On the one hand, we're saying uh, what a great job we're doing. And on the other hand, um, we're seeing this data as a result. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. Um, as I said, keen to make this interactive. So I'm going to be asking people to come and, and share their views. Um, as we go through, uh, I'll monitor the chat. Um, we've got some, uh, I see we've got some um, people from Mauritius and Saudi Arabia and Nigeria and as well as London. I'm in London as well, uh, Christine, which part of London are you in? I'm in Southeast London. Uh, so really international audience. So hopefully we can get some good perspectives on this. Soho, nice. Um, do you live there or work there? I, I, I'm, uh, I'm living in Southeast London. So the first thing I would like to ask your opinions on, and I'm looking for people to come and uh, yes, we will uh, share the, the video 
Uh, this will go on. It, it's being streamed on LinkedIn. Uh, it'll go onto the podcast. Uh, it'll go onto YouTube as well. Um, is safety an illusion? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is define safety. So what is safety? How do we define safety? Um, who would like to share their definition of safety um, with us today? And uh, and we can start this discussion uh, rolling. I'm going to look on the chat. If you're on Zoom, go into reactions and raise your hand. And that's the best way to uh, to volunteer to share um share a perspective if i don't get a volunteer i'm going to have to pick on somebody you see to uh to get involved who should i pick on well i think i might have to pick on uh either tim hassel or luke nicole just because i know you guys a bit, a little bit better than some of the other people Come on, Tim, how do we define safety? Unmute yourself and tell us how do we define safety? Uh, safety for me is about uh, both the physical and the psychological well-being of a person. Uh, for me, it's about they are able to do their task without harm. And they're able to go home at the end of the day uh, fit and well. And that's what I'd want to from a safe that's safety for me okay that's a that's a good um that, that that's a good description and how well do you feel that we're doing and achieving that and obviously you're going to have a different perspective on this from from thinking about you know your clients let's say in your business uh but if, if you if you take a step back and think well how well are we doing about that let's say in the uk and then another step back how well are we doing that around the world? I think in the UK, we are starting to join the well-being and the physical safety aspects together. I think we're starting to actually make headroads there or inroads. Um, I think across Europe, they're slightly... Uh, a little not not behind but they're doing things slightly differently <clears throat> uh, as a global point of view I think we are there's a lot of legislation that says you must keep people safe and we're dealing with this is the physical safety for me the the well-being side is missed uh, be that financial well-being, be that mental health, be that everything that joins to make someone safe in their workplace or in the world. Um, I think we're all in a different place. I think the UK's got very strong legislation for health, what you'd class as normal health and safety. Do I think it is... Are we following it closely? Uh, no, I'd say we are in a we're in a place where we feel slightly more secure than maybe we should do. Uh, slightly more safe than maybe we should do, and that's what I'm finding on some of the audits I'm going into. Nice, nice. Okay, thanks, Tim. That's uh, that's really helpful uh, to get that perspective, and hopefully that will encourage others to. Um, volunteer rather than be um, conscripted. Just on the point of legislation, I spoke recently with um, a lady called Shona Methven on, on my podcast, and um, she came from a political background. She was actually uh, quite heavily involved as a um, chief whip in um, Islington Council back in the day. Um, and it was interesting to think about the health and safety legislation in the UK and obviously this year is the 50th anniversary uh, of a lot of the changes that have kind of given us the bedrock of, of where we are now um, and one of the questions that we debated was um, you know do we need to be or should we consider being perhaps a little bit more authoritarian a little bit more prescriptive um, when it comes to legislation you know does the fact that we speak about uh, so far as reasonably practicable 
And that's a bit woolly, hold us back from actually achieving uh, the outcomes that we would want to. And being in that position that you've kind of identified, Tim, of, you know, we're maybe not quite as safe as we think we are, um, is some of that because this is left to um, interpretation. Perhaps if we were a bit more stringent and strict on certain things, and rather than leaving it down to uh, an organisation to define um, what safety should be, perhaps if we were uh, giving them very specific KPIs in certain areas, you know, maybe that would uh, improve things. Don't know if anybody's got any uh, views on that. Um, but in the meantime, I can see that in the chat here on the Zoom, we're getting a lot of thoughts around being protected from harm as being the uh, the definition of um, of safety. So it's interesting you brought up Tim perception versus reality because this was the next thing that I was going to uh, use to try and provoke some uh, some conversation here. Um, this week's podcast that's coming out uh, is with a lady called Tanya. And she is a PhD um, student, I guess that's the right uh, phrase. She, she's researching safety. And one of the things that was really interesting um, that she and I spoke about was some research she did about COVID. So she's interested in external factors. So we spoke about how the economy drives safety outcomes uh, as an external factor. And we started speaking about COVID. And what she found in her research was really fascinating. And it was that during COVID, the perception of safety was really very, very high. In other words, people felt very, very safe. But when comparing the incident data during that period of time, we saw an uptick in incidents. So there was this, this gap between the perception of being safe and the reality of actually we were less safe based on the incident data. And this was only looking at you know certain geographies and certain sectors and so on and so forth. Um, but it was really, really interesting to me uh, to highlight that actually perception is not necessarily always the reality. Go on, Tim, you've got your hand up. Come back, in, come back in on this. COVID for me showed two things. Um, we were prescripted and following wash your hands, you know, happy birthday twice while you're washing your hands, you must wear a mask. You, you, you're two metres apart. And there was a big focus on touch points. Now, in our, in our organisation, I was going into buildings during COVID. And I actually thought saw the prescription of you have to do this from a COVID point of view taking place versus other legislation being ignored. So fire safety is an example. I was able to walk into a building where they were still working, they were still there, and every fire door being wedged open. So there was no touch point. Um, I was able to walk from the ground floor to the top top floor, down the stairs and back out of the building without touching any door. And that's the perception for me. COVID showed me two things. Number one, when we perceive a hazard is more dangerous than something else, i.e. COVID versus a fire, we choose the uh, to go with the, the safer option. We knew We know COVID was killing people. But we also know fire, fire kills people. Uh, and there's a massive disconnect in that reality piece for me about that perception. I'm protecting against COVID. We're protecting the workforce against our, our, our virus, but actually we're not protecting them against fire. And that, that really showed this perception versus the reality for me, Christian. Yeah, and 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 um, I think that was kind of what was flagged up by the by the data. And, and anecdotally, I saw examples of that in my field of slips, trips, and falls uh, as well. You know, things like um, uh, walkways.
being used or areas of buildings being walked in that, that often were not walked in uh, very regularly before because of the one-way systems uh, causing issues or having hand sanitizer stations all over the place uh, causing issues that um, where where floors were getting regularly contaminated with sanitizer uh, that, uh, uh, and they were floors that typically would not be expected to be um, uh, contaminated at all and therefore the slip uh, resistance was not a, a prior uh, issue. I suppose what it showed overall was um, something around psychology, wasn't it? Because, you know, our focus was on this one area. You know, it's all about COVID. It's all about COVID. It's all about COVID. Uh, and I suppose the positive side of the research that Tanya shared was that people must have therefore felt like uh, their organisations were doing uh, all the steps they could have done to to make them feel safe when it came to COVID. So that's why that perception uh, ramped up because all we were focused on was COVID and we felt as if the organisations we were working in were doing a pretty good job at keeping us safe from COVID. But obviously, as you say, the, uh, the problem is that we were then missing uh, all these other uh, risks. So I think, yeah, it's an interesting thing to, to consider um, this whole um this whole perception but actually christian isn't that isn't that critical because that just that research and what tim's just said um indicates that we have a problem in in looking at comparative risk and looking at priorities because in many of the situations that i worked in covid was not the priority it was fire safety. It was so many other things that were a priority. So individual perception is actually critical in managing safety. So to, to have a clarity of the priorities that are involved when people are working. Yeah, thanks, Shirley. I, I fully agree with, with that. I think that um, what, what's interesting is that we're all really good at doing dynamic risk assessments, if you think about it, right? So whenever you step out of your house and you cross the road or you sit behind the wheel of a car or, or you do any number of other things on a daily basis, um, you're constantly making dynamic risk assessment uh, decisions and you are uh, balancing out risk versus reward and so on and so forth. Um, so I think innately people do have the ability to do this um but i think that there's a question around prioritization immediacy of risk versus longer term risk and also i suppose understanding and perception of you know where things are perhaps um uh hidden hidden risks um like the area that i work in you know uh everyone knows it exists but people don't often put it up at the top of their list so yeah it's a really it's, it's a difficult one to grapple with, isn't it? Mm. And what actually, have you found? Reality, sorry, sorry, Kristen. No, hey, go on. Yeah, in reality, more people, so we look at UK statistics, more people are dying from, um, from long-term, so from chemicals, from long-term cumulative injury rather than short-term. Um, and are we doing enough on those levels? So it's, it's a, what, what's it about 356 people die per year um, from physical, predominantly physical risk, but actually long term injuries are related to chemicals, um, uh, mental health, all those kinds of things are becoming more of an issue mm. than f purely physical ha harm. And are we doing enough um, for those long term injuries? Exactly. And I suppose that that's a great another great example of, you know, this this overarching topic and why I thought it'd be a good uh, a good one to debate is, you know, is is safety and illusion, because probably most people would think, yeah, we're pretty safe. But actually, as you dig into it, um, you know, that's a, that's a great example that I haven't thought of where, you know, perhaps we're not doing as well as we uh, as we could or should be doing. Uh, what can we do to um, to uh, to try and address that? Um, I got uh, an email from uh, from Richard, who Richard Heath, who's often on these calls and couldn't make uh, this one. Um, and he said um, something he'd like to throw into the mix 
when it comes to this question of is safety an illusion uh, was um, uh, a strategy that he employs often when he speaks to people, which is asking them a question of what's, what is PPE? And um, it's very, very rare in Richard's experience, and he works in a very high risk uh, industry uh, that, and, and I'm sort of putting words in his mouth here, or I'm trying to retell his words in, in, in a more condensed way, but uh, fundamentally, People don't seem to understand what PPE is. Um, they, there's, there's a lot of people that think that, you know, PPE will keep us safe from all hazards. Um, not many people understand that it's the last line of defence. Not many people understand that it's supposed to be, um, you know, coming in after all these other types of controls. Um, and I know we spoke about this uh, on the session about the hierarchy of controls uh, recently uh, as well. Um, but again, just an example of where you know, we're doing stuff that by providing the PPE that is positive, uh, that is designed to keep people safe, that pay, perhaps makes us feel good about what we're doing. But are we creating this illusion? Are we creating this feeling that this is solving the problem when we actually know um, that it really isn't? And, you know, how does how do we square that circle? Um, there's a chat uh, comment in the chat from Simon here about um, <clears throat> woolly statements. Um, that the umbrella statements in the UK legislation allow for innovation in plants uh, and people, which loop around on each other through guidance, such as plan, do, check, act, all within cost restrictions, of course, yeah. Of course. And I think, um, you know, uh, going back to my conversation with Shona, um, I'm sort of more on the uh, politically on the sort of libertarian side of things where I believe in um, people making their own decisions and market forces and all of this kind of stuff. Um, but interestingly, on this point, uh, so I buy into to, to, to that. Uh, but I do think that there are certain areas where we could perhaps do um, do a little bit more. Uh, perhaps be a bit more focused, um, driven by the data um, <clears throat> and what that's showing us. Um, something I invite people to do is is to look in the mirror, and I'm going to just get, use an example from my world here around the data concerning slip strips and falls. So, you know, uh, if you look at the HC Riddle data, uh, year after year after year, decade after decade after decade. Uh, I'm being a bit facetious there because obviously it doesn't go back that many decades, but uh, for the last 10, 15 years anyway, slip strips and falls, biggest cause of riddles, uh, consistently about 30% uh, again and again and again and again and again, you know, varying between, I think, 28% and 33% of riddles. Um, but yet, is there an illusion here? That's the one hand, that's the data, that's the outputs. Um, on the other hand, how many of us on this call have a risk assessment for slips, trips and falls? All of us. How many of us have policies and procedures? All of us. So why are we having so many of these things happening? And I guess it's interesting to think about what can we do to look in the mirror and is this illusion sometimes starting with ourselves that's a bit of a challenging statement um but you know are we creating this illusion sometimes um because we're sort of saying yeah this is what we need to do this is how we do it this this is the best way um do we take enough time to reflect to look outside of our um, prior experiences to get uh, other perspectives um, not just in this area, in all areas. Um, so I suppose that would be a slight challenge that I would uh, give to uh, to all of us. Let's see a couple of uh, thumbs up. So there's um, a bit of thought around this point of, you know, is safety an illusion? Um, I think the consensus seems to be, you know, perhaps there are things where there are aspects of, of safety where we could uh, do better and where perhaps there is this kind of veil of, of, uh, of slight illusion. 
So I suppose the next question is, what can we do better? Um, what do we think we could do, given that context, to try and improve uh, things? Has anybody got any thoughts on on that, Tim? Um, for me, it's about show me. It's actually about the supervisors and managers taking time to stop their busy schedule and get away from task. And it's to actually ask the question, show me. I'll give you an example. I used to work in retail. Yeah, I was a, a store manager. I had a delicatessen where we legally had to uh, sell safe food. Um, I went to the delicatessen and said, can I see your temperature checks, please? And this girl gave me a book full of temperature checks. All nicely written out. Great. Tick. I could have walked away at that point. But I said, show me how you take the temperature, please. And she went well, front, middle and back, front, middle and back, front, middle and back across three, four areas of the, the deli. I said, what do you use? She had a thermometer. Show me, please. How do you use it? She got it out of the box. Can you turn it on for me? There was no battery in it. So how are they taking the temperatures of a delicatessen? Uh, well, I could just assume. I could just go, yeah, they're all happening. Um, it's it's huge. So for, for me, show me goes to so many levels that things are actually, when you think they're in place, are they actually in place? Uh, yeah, I, I like that. And um, it's it's the sort of thing that we encourage people to do um, in, in the SIP world is, is actually start measuring some stuff uh, and, and have that evidence. But we're not measuring, you know, we're, we're not going down this route of um, zero harm uh, measuring the outputs. We're trying to measure the inputs, uh, but it's but it's equally important, I suppose, to measure the inputs that really make a difference um, because you can, you could be a, a busy fool going around and, um asking that question of show me or prove it to me or you know give me the measurement or, or whatever whatever phrase and uh, depending on how you uh, do that but you need to have the knowledge don't you to to know what you're measuring and what you're asking to be shown and, and that is going to make an impact i suppose that could be one of the challenges there Anybody else got any uh, any thoughts here on on what we could do um, <clears throat> given this uh, discussion? Any other ideas or, or anything else you'd like to to, to bring up? Um, in the meantime, let me know. Let me um, share with you the uh, next session um, that we're going to do on the safety roundtable, which is in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, we're going to be talking about, well, it's called From Safety Professional to Safety Leader, Why and How. So hopefully it's pretty clear what it's about, but it's kind of, uh, you know, are we are we safety professionals? Are we safety leaders? Should we be thinking about how to be a safety leader? What does that mean? How do we go about doing that? What would be the benefits uh, of that? Uh, so um, looking forward to, uh, to having that discussion uh, in... Uh, in a couple of weeks time um well uh thank you everybody for joining today um some good interventions um hopefully this has made you think a bit and um hopefully we'll go away and look in the mirror a, a tiny bit and just think you know could we be doing more could we get some more perspective on this and uh try and come up with some strategies to avoid this potential um illusion of safety um hope it's been useful um thanks for attending and uh look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks on the next safety roundtable cheers thanks for joining us on the safety and risk success podcast if you've enjoyed this episode please hit follow and do share on social media does anyone you know spring to mind as a great guest even yourself if so, please contact us on podcast at slipsafety.co.uk. See you next week for another episode.